So I just want to touch on monitoring because I think as well as, as, well as knowing what you have, it's also really valuable to know how, how it changes through time. And, and I think with monitoring, you know, I've really got one main take home message, which is really quite simple, and that's use photo points. Photo points are incredibly valuable because monitoring informs your management and it can provide assurance to others about what you're doing. So monitoring's got lots of important roles. Um, it's part of that social license. Photo points, if you're gonna do anything on your farm, set up some photo points. Go to a place, we're actually gonna stop when we go up the hill in a few minutes, um, and it'd be a perfect point for a photo point. A photo point shows you how it changes through time. So this hillside here, farm tracks here, it's really thickened up with, with, with native uh, woody regeneration. The photo doesn't lie. Tussock grassland is in the Mackenzie Basin. I can see the same tussocks from 2005 are here in 2018. The tussock grassland hasn't changed. Um, but my point is that it's something really, really simple that you can all do and it's really, really informative. With photo points, there's some really basic rules um, that, that permanently mark your photo point. Take your original photograph when you repeat it because you won't remember if you took it there or if you took it there and then you, you waste half the photo. Um, take the photos at the same time of the year before things start to dry off and be patient, do it for several years. And they show an awful lot. And even over really short periods of time, this is up the shot over, um, only five years, this whole hillside has really thickened up in the shrub cover over that time. There was a change in the management between those two periods and, and the shrub cover is really responding. You know, a Karnaka stand that's had grazing taken out of it, three years later, I could hardly photograph it. You know, it changed so quickly. Photo points are really, really effective. So I just mentioned, you know, as I say, that, that would be, if you're gonna do anything at all, do that. And I'd recommend every farmer with native biodiversity should do that. Probably you've talked about stream monitoring before, I don't really need to talk about it, as, or others have. It's, it's well known, there are different ways to approach it, from the sophisticated, like electric fishing, through to using things like the Schmack um, test to get an idea of what's in your streams. I think the other thing that's come up recently is environmental DNA. Um, I don't know, has anyone done environmental DNA sampling here? Yep, you have, okay, so you guys are familiar with it. I mean, it's like they used to test wastewater for COVID. It's the same principle, bits of DNA are in the water and you can pick it up and you can find out. It's really help, helpful for knowing like, have you got native fish and, and invertebrates and what species are there? It's a really good technique. Um, bird monitoring, is the other one I want to mention briefly. Um, you know, the, the traditional way to monitor birds is to go out and do a five minute count, but most people can't tell birds apart. They're really hard to tell apart. Um, if you are going to do counts, you might do rural or moorpork counts, or you might do bellbird counts. Same as a photo point, same place, same way, same time of year, do it for several years. There's a lot of interest now in acoustic recording. Um, there's a little um, acoustic recorder in here, there's a solar pack there. It's recording what it, what's out there. It does it all the time or for, a, for periods of time continuously and um, the, the data can be analysed. We don't have the ability to analyse it properly yet, um, but the technology is being developed. The, basically, the computer uses AI to identify what's there and it will become a really useful tool. And in the States they can do it, but in New Zealand we don't have it working here yet. Cacophony is one company that offers that. So concluding thoughts on monitoring, I think as farmers you should have ownership of your monitoring, be actively involved in, in how you um, set it up and, and what it's showing you because then you can learn from it. Um, there's lots of support out there, keep it simple, keep it repeatable, document what, you, what you've done. And My sort of final thoughts, and we're going to see this guy flowering on the right here, the beautiful uh, white clematis is in full flower up there at the moment, it's just gorgeous. There's an old cliche that knowledge is power, which is true. The more you know about biodiversity, um, the better you are to have a discussion with a regulator or, or with a market for that matter. But it's also, I also think having good biodiversity knowledge can be empowering. And I think the more you know about what's on your farm, the more you'll feel empowered to, to look after it and want to take it forward. Um, I think it's really valuable. And I think working in catchment groups, that peer-to-peer -peer support, um, being able to bring in people to talk to you as a group is going to be really, really valuable for, um, for helping um, get good biodiversity outcomes in your landscapes. I've spoken far too much, so I'll stop now. Any questions on that last part?